Hi everyone, this is Shannon with Charleston Clay Jewelry and Studio coming to you live from the beautiful holy city of Charleston and uh, just wanted to say um, I'm really excited. This is my first ever free video tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you get a lot out of it and I especially hope that you can take this tutorial and turn it into your own creations and this technique will translate into a lot of other um, beads, pendants, uh, various types of things and you can really take it and run with it and it's a fairly simple um, tutorial for beginners too. So what you can see here, I've got my palette ready and I'm going to go ahead and show you a finished product. Um, this is what we're going to be learning how to do. This is the um, sort of a batik series that I did um, a while back and it's just a beautiful pendant, um, square pendant that's perfect for fall. You can see we've got leaves with um, actually hand carved details and then I just put my hole here and strung it on some beautiful black suede. So it's just a really lovely simple pendant that can be worn with just about anything. So that's what we're going to be learning how to do today. So I'm going to show you what you need to begin with. First of all, I've got my palette started. Now this is totally up for your own interpretation. Um, of course I've got my base black clay and I'm using Primo clays here and uh, I do my own color blending because I like to have it different than what just comes out of the package. So my basic black, I have this beautiful rust red. I have um, sort of a, this is a green chartreuse style. Then I have another green over here that's even got some uh, interesting blends in it. I decided to leave it like this. So it's got sort of a limey green and a um, olive green in here, but I really liked the way it did. And, and you know, leaves in nature are full of color. So this piece I decided to leave like this and not blend it all the way. But of course that's up to you. And then I have this sort of taupey with even some hints of gold throughout just to give it a little bit of sparkle. So I've got a very nice fall color scheme going on here. So again, what you're going to need, you're going to need your base square cutter which this is about uh, two and a quarter inches or so and then I have my teardrop cutters which are a variety of um, sizes here so I've got large all the way down to the small uh, cutters so you can get those online order them through um, polyform products that sells all of your Sculpey clays then we also have a couple of tools. I use this uh, crochet needle, um, but you can also use uh, Polyform Products um, Etch and Pearls. This is made by um, the Sculpey manufacturers, and they come in three different sizes. So you can use this, but what we're really going to be using is the actual tip of the uh, the etch and pearl. Then you're going to need your Pearlex powders. And I have um, Aztec Gold and Carbon Black. So, okay, well let's get started on the making our piece. So we're gonna begin by, oh, and I forgot one important thing, saran wrap or plastic wrap. This is like a secret weapon in my studio. So I get it from the dollar store and it's just a cheap 100 square feet and this goes a long way in my studio. So we are going to go ahead and tear out a little bit of that to have for our project and I'll show you why it's a great thing to keep. So tear out a piece of that and set it to the side. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our black clay and 
our saran wrap and I'm going to lay it over my black clay and I'm going to go ahead and punch out my initial square. And keeping in mind um, this clay is rolled out on the Sculpey clay machine, it's rolled out on number two. So um, now that varies, of course, depending upon the machine that you have, um, what thickness, but uh, it could also be number nine on certain other um, machines. So keep that in mind. This is number two thickness, and the, all of them are actually, so all my colors and everything. Okay, now it is Charleston. It's hot. It's sticky. Um, my clay can sometimes be like bubble gum this time of year, so that makes it kind of difficult to work with at times. So you'll notice that some of my clay is a bit sticky, but that's okay. We're going to make this work anyway. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to set this black square aside, and then I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out some of my teardrop shapes. So I'm just going to take... Um, a couple of different sizes, and you want to cut different sizes out of each color so that you have a variety to work with, and I'll show you why. Okay, so the next step, once you've finished uh, cutting out all of your various sized teardrop shapes um, in all the different colors, um, we are going to take a look at our black square that we initially made. And go ahead and figure out where you want to put your bail hole, which is essentially what you can run your cording through, your suede, any of that stuff, uh, however you would like to finish it. Center, make a little hole where you want that to go, and that looks about right. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that on through. And then next, what we're going to do is we're going to take our various cutters, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting the design into the square piece. And these can go all different ways. Um, you can uh, use the bigger cutters all the way down to the smaller cutters, but I'm just going to show you how this is going to look. So I'm going to start with my cutter here. Then you find the corresponding shape and size, and then you simply place that piece into that section, just like so. Then uh, we're going to find another color and we're going to continue to do this pattern, finding the corresponding size. And we're just going to go through and cut and cut on into that piece just like so. It's like a puzzle almost. Really enjoy doing these because it is uh, puzzle making, which is one of my favorite things to do. I like putting things together and engineering. And make sure you throw a few little small pieces. And actually, make sure you do a few at the top, too. This is always fun to have a few of those leaves sort of dripping down into the top. Nice rusty red color here. And like I said, my clay is just sticky. It is about 98 degrees here in Charleston, so... <laughs> And hot and humid, no matter where you go, you can't escape the heat. That's just how we are here. But we sure do love it. And we're just going to continue to run these colors all through, making our leaf pattern.
over the top. Our trusty handy dandy saran wrap. It's going to go over. What the saran wrap does is it creates a, a beveled edge. So I like to call it lazy girl finishing, which really is exactly what it is because this keeps me from having to do so much sanding afterwards because goodness I hand sand and boy oh boy that's a that is a, a project in and of itself it takes a lot of time I do love the hand sanding okay so we're gonna use this saran wrap take your square cutter and you're just gonna press down all through Make sure you get those edges. Bring your cutter up. And, and forgive the noise in the background. My daughter has a parakeet. And I cannot put the parakeet outside right now. So we are just going to have to listen to her singing and squawking. And, and that's okay. Because it means she's happy. Okay, next step. We're going to roll out another piece of black clay at the um, number two thickness. We're going to lay our saran wrap. No, I'm sorry. We're actually going to lay our finished piece. <laughs> Back me up. Lay our finished piece on here. Just like so. Make sure you don't have any air bubbles or anything like that. Um, get your piece, your small piece that you made the bale with ready and your square piece ready. Lay your saran wrap right over the top. Make sure you pull out any sort of creasing that might leave an impression in the clay. And then we're going to fit our square right around over the top. And what this does, this just gives it a little extra backing, a little extra thickness. We're going to push our square all the way through, making sure you get it all the way through. And then I'm going to lift up that, loosen it just a bit. And then I'm going to run my little bale piece right on through and I just kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure I've got it in the right spot. Here we go. And push that right on through. So, there we have our heavier piece. And then we are going to pull this up off of here and take the center out so you can just use your blade to carefully remove it. Pop that through. Now if you'll notice, this gives it such a beautiful rounded edge. You can always take your finger and just run it over your edges and see the beauty that it gives the piece. Beveled already. Don't need to sand the edges so much. Okay, so from here on out, I'm going to show you how we do our hand carving and the detail work. All right, so I hope everybody is ready to add our beautiful details. So now we have our beautifully um, beveled piece. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add all that beautiful detail work just like you see in the main pendant here that is completed. So you can see that we add some details to our leaves and then I throw in a few little uh, dots around the edges just to give it a little more um, detail. So let's get started on that. What you're going to do is you're going to take that lovely uh, either pearl and etch tool that you get from Polyform Products, or you can take your knitting needle, which is what I'm using here today, and then we're going to go on and start adding the carvings, the hand carvings and all. So what you're going to do is you're going to just carefully go 
around the edges of your leaves with your um, uh, knitting needle and um, we're also going to make some beautiful uh, leaf veins throughout. So here we go. Let's get started. First of all, I'm going to do my veins. And I like to use an upward motion. So I'm going to sort of bend towards the center point of each leaf because leaves need to look like they're swaying. And this just gives it a nice natural appeal. And if you get a little clay on the end, you just pull that off. And then you go down and add those hand carvings on each leaf. And now that we have all of our leaves nicely detailed, and you can be as creative with this as you like, of course, adding lots of veining or just a little bit of veining, however you like, really. And then you've gone around and you've placed your little polka dots just to give it that extra uh, detail work. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our Perlex powders. You have your Aztec Gold and your Carbon Black. And uh, you can also use any golds or if you wanted to do a silver metallic instead, you can always do that. Again, um, I'd love to see your creations and see what you come up with. That would be wonderful. I just love seeing my students work. So, I'm going to take a soft brush just uh, like this one. And this is just an old, very soft brush that I use for all of my powders. And I'm going to take the gold. And um, also one thing to remember whenever you're using these powders, it's always best to wear a small face mask. Just those generic dust masks um, are perfect for this because this is very fine pulverized metal powder and you don't want to be breathing it in or getting it into your nose or mouth or anything like that because it does come up into the air like dust. So I'm going to be very careful with mine today uh, so that I don't stir it up too much because I cannot make a video and speak with the mask on. You wouldn't be able to hear me. So I'm going to just lightly dust in the gold and I like to make the gold on the little uh, polka dots. So I'll use my powders just to fill in those beautiful little polka dots. Okay, so we've got our pendant that we have uh, baked and it's um, ready for sanding. 
So you can see you've got what looks like a pretty ugly pendant, but just wait until we start sanding. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to take our spritzer of water, or if you don't have a spritzer, no worries. You can just literally drip on some water. Now what I like to do is I have all these old painter's rags that I use. Um, and generally, I recommend doing this near a sink, um, but for the purpose of the video today, we're just going to use one of my old dirty rags. Um, well, it looks dirty. It's clean. It's just got lots of staining. So we're going to take our pendant. I'm going to spritz on some water, get it nice and damp. I'm going to take my wet dry sandpaper. Now, you can use... Um, probably for this I would use a 400 grit. Um, you can do 400 or 800, it's fine. Um, I really like to just have um, it not be buffed to a shine. I like the rustic appeal on this pendant. So we're just going to lightly take our 400 grit wet dry sandpaper and we're going to carefully go over the pendant. Keeping it nice and wet, using pressure, and just buffing over the entire pendant. No real rhyme or reason on this. So, if you prefer a higher shine on yours, you can use, it's sort of a recipe for a nice shine. You can use your wet dry paper, your wet dry sandpaper, and go from about a 400 grit all the way up to a 2000 grit um, to really buff it to a shine. Now, because I like mine more rustic, I generally don't do much more than maybe the 400 and then the 800 just to get rid of any, you know, any little fingerprints or anything like that. But with these pendants, I think the more rustic the better. So even if you've got a few little lines in there from fingerprints, that just really gives it that handmade appeal. And as artists, we all know that we can appreciate that handmade appeal. We don't want to look like we bought our jewelry from a manufacturer. There needs to be some rustic elements to it. So you can see, isn't this lovely? It's really popping out those beautiful colors that I worked to hand blend before we started. Now I'm going to give this a little bit more of a spritz. And then I'm going to take my beautiful uh, artist towel and I'm going to just wash off, dry off some of that excess. And it really showcases all that lovely detail that you worked so hard to carve into your piece. And sometimes you get a little around the edges, so just buff that right on out using a good bit of pressure. And if you've baked it properly, according to the directions and all, you're going to find that you've got a very solid, sturdy piece. So, ladies and gentlemen, your beautiful batik leaf pendant is complete. Now you can take this and you can string your cording through and hang it on a necklace. You can give it to a friend for Christmas or birthday. But uh, one thing I would love for you to do is to share your work with me that you've created using my um, tutorial today. You can uh, upload um, to the Flickr and just make sure that you um, mention me in your uploads to Flickr. I would love it if you would post it on my Facebook, uh, send it to me via email. All of my information is on my website. And the website is www.charlestonclayjewelry.com.
So uh, send me your creations. I would love to see them. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I really look forward to working with you on future tutorials.